Six years ago, we opened to suburban streets of the neighborhood surrounding Skyline Elementary. A kid, about ten years in age, sprints from around the corner of one such street. He's a fair bit taller than other kids his age, with long, unwieldy limbs, short, reddish hair, and a bright green t-shirt that reads, MONSTER. As he runs, we hear in the distance behind him a cacophony of mockeries, insults, Come and on, you footsteps. little dweeb. Stop running! You can't where run you going, Monster? I'm gonna get you. Monster, where are you going? <laughs> All right, you went kid, that get way. Back. Oh, the monster's You're only making this worse on yourself. Hey, get him. Let's go. No, get him. You won't like what's gonna there happen go. to you when we catch you. Get him. The awkward kid trips and sprawls upon the ground like a slinky spiked down a flight of stairs. His arms now bruised, his legs most assuredly bleeding, he tries to collect himself and rise to his feet. For a fleeting moment, he considers calling for help. The streets aren't exactly barren, but no one would listen. No one ever listens. And immediately before he is descended upon by his pursuers, he spots an old man across the street. The old man watches, watches as three other kids about the same age fall upon the awkward kid and take his arms. Oh, he's down. <laughs> oh, he's down. He's on the ground. <laughs> we got you now. No, get on him. You grab his other arm. No, get on him. No, you're not on him. Get on him. You put him in the Nelson. All right, kid, don't struggle. You're only going to make this worse. Now the full Nelson. Now the double Nelson. I don't even know what the fuck double Nelson is. The old man, he shakes his head, turns, and leaves. In a way, the awkward kid can't blame the old man. He'd most likely have also left if situations were reversed. The awkward kid doesn't struggle when he's dragged away from the street through some bushes, and into a field behind the elementary school. When he is thrown to the ground, the awkward kid turns to face his attackers. The answer to the question doesn't matter much, but he finds himself asking anyways, Why are you doing this? Ooh, he wants to know why! Yo, Chadworth, tell him! You didn't hear? The kid in charge of the group of bullies leans in. The awkward kid can smell his cologne and is left to wonder why a ten-year-old is wearing cologne. Well, we're the founding members of the We Hate Seth Club. We have to do this. It's club policy. I don't make the rules. Oh, wait, yeah, I do. Bitch. We next see the three bullies surrounding the awkward kid, one behind him holding his arms in place. Chadworth has a hand on the awkward kid's jaw, forcing his mouth open, and the last of the trio dangles a dead cicada above the awkward kid's head. A sickening crunch follows. <laughs> Even Chadworth backs away from the scene. The awkward kid, Seth, had only bitten down when Chadworth forced him to. Still, he holds the carcass of the insect in his mouth as he watches the reactions of his attackers. Dude, gross. You're sick. Seth chews. Once. Twice. Chadworth backs away, and Seth steps towards him. The hell are you doing? You like it? Man, you are a freak. Finally, the ball is in Seth's court. He smiles. Insect gore runs between his teeth. He sees it. Respect. Fear. Something. In Chadworth's wide eyes, he sticks out his bug-covered tongue and runs at Chadworth, who promptly flees. Maybe... Seth never needed the old man's help, after all. When we ended the transformed preludes, you were kind of a hero a little bit. You were someone's hero at the end of the prelude, whether you wanted to be or not. Good old Will. Yes, you met a comic book nerd who's really enamored by you, named William Wendell, a chonky little sweaty nerd, and you also met a weird 
lanky dude who can unhinge his jaw and swallow anything. I'm going to be his friend. Yeah, I bet. He walked away from the encounter respecting you because you're also weird, I guess. So you do have influence over him. Uh, just wait, I'll join their little animal gang and become the pigeon. How threatening. <laughs> Where we're picking up, it has not been long since those events. I think, though, if memory serves, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe those events took place like the beginning of the school year. Oh, yeah. Nice and early on. Hella nice and early on. So we jump ahead maybe about maybe about a month. We're landing in the middle of October. And the big thing to note that's coming up is that there's a national holiday at the end of the school week called Remembrance Day. It is, for all intents and purposes, a day of unity, community, and obviously remembrance. And to celebrate, Horizon City is having a ceremony led by the mayor at City Center towards late afternoon Friday. And then following that, our festivities. The streets will have various fair-like things set up. Food stalls, games, probably some rides and stuff. It's a, big, it's a big city event. I think that we are focusing back in on the life of uh, Scott. <laughs> back in on the life of Scott during this week. Maybe about midweek. And I want to start by setting a scene after school, um, we find ourselves pulled into Horizon City proper. Uh, I would imagine that like, if we were going to start this off, we would see the nice horizon view of Horizon City, the uh, city skyline, basically. And then we pull into a particular street. And then we pull into a nondescript building in the middle of that street, probably towered by larger buildings on either side, peeking in through the window. Or as we approach to peek in through the window, we get some speech bubbles from Natalie that say, It's okay, I promise. Just jump. Do it. Maybe you can fly this time for real. Those wings can't just be for show. And when we focus in, I picture it to be kind of like an empty warehouse with a whole bunch of like broken boxes or whatever. Like it's not, the, this place isn't in use anymore. And we see her standing on the ground floor looking up. And maybe there's like a second level ledge or balcony. And I would like to imagine your character there because Natalie, as set up in the playbook, is someone who's grown up with you and is helping you understand your body. <laughs> Whatever oh, that boy. means. <laughs> and the puberty metaphors keep on coming. Yeah. So today is one of those days where she's like, where she has somehow one way or the other convinced you to I would imagine once again trying to figure out how to fly. Uh, I could absolutely see Scott just sort of sighing once more. I know he doesn't have the power of superhuman durability, but he's got to be tougher than the normal person, right? Yeah, he's a superhero, pretty much. I mean, he's our, at the very least, he's our main character. So, of course, he has some plot armor. I could see a panel in which he uh, is sighing deeply. Um and then stretches all of his wings out to their maximum extent, really catching as much ambient light is the, in the room as he can, reflecting it off of his metallic body, and then jumping a good 10, 15 feet into the air in this warehouse, and then falling flat on his face. Yeah, do you do you like do you think the panels like draw it out so it kind of looks like he might almost start flying, and then it's just the next panel is just him immediately falling on his face? Oh, yeah. Like a bit of like, you know, forward momentum carrying him. He's gone horizontal. Uh, you know, eyes are closed. When I open, it's like, did I get it? And that's when he hits the ground. So it's almost majestic at one point. Yeah, I'd say the height of the scene is the wing flare with the light reflecting and that sort of uh, glorious majesty that is his newly transformed body. <laughs> yeah. So he, he falls flat in his face. And the uh, next thing he hears as he's laying on the ground i guess is natalie rush over to him and like crouch down to begin helping him up at least and she like stuff uh stifles a little bit of a chuckle because she know you can she knows that you can kind of take a little bit of a beating this isn't the first time this has happened i imagine and she does ask are, are you okay you're okay right of course you're okay i'm fine i'm fine didn't even break my nose oh good i remember that the one time where you actually did break your nose 
Yep. No, learn to take it on the chin. There's Literally. so much blood. There's blood everywhere. At least it's red. That's nice. She she nods and says, I was half expecting it to be blue, to be honest. Blue was going to be my guess. I was kind of hoping for, like, gold or, like, mercury. Like, you know, like the quicksilver kind of a... That'd be cool. She thinks about it for a moment and, with a smile, says, Do you think that's what William thinks your blood looks like? Yeah, actually, I saw a picture. I might have gotten the idea from him. He drew a picture of you bleeding? He won't stop drawing me. I keep telling him not to, and, like, suddenly there's panels of me getting cut open by hyena people. It's just... God, that kid's weird. Is that who you were fighting last time he drew you? Because I, I saw the hyena people. Did he do something after that? Uh, He keeps hiding his notebook, but he's really bad at it. So I definitely saw one where I was beating up um that Seth kid. Uh python oh yeah python right one of the uh those manimal guys running around bunch of weirdos god who okayed that name like which one of them thought that was good <laughs> he says i know it's such a stupid name whoever thought of it has to be very non-creative y- you two have a little bit of a back and forth and a- at some point she will say you you do know i'm gonna ask you to try that again right can we do it tomorrow if you feel like you can keep waiting n- to fly but personally i'd like to see you start soaring through the sky sooner rather than later yeah that'd be great i no one wants that more than me but i also really don't like eating cement she looks down and like at the ground where you landed and then back up at you and rolls her eyes a little bit and says fine but you're buying me pizza on the way home yeah that's fine i'm starving actually this pizza sounds great cool so, Seth, if you don't mind giving me a little bit of a montage mashup of you and Natalie going on a not date after she tries to teach you how to fly. Definitely not a date. Definitely not. A hundred percent not. Um, yeah, I could see uh, and at least one panel has to be dedicated to Scott doing his best to sort of rebind the wings that now cover his body. Wrapping him around his person, probably putting on like a tight fitting t shirt, and then the big old hoodie over that, pulling that all the way up. Is that something Natalie helps you with? Like, does she know how to help you, like, bind yourself? Is that an awkward body moment between the two of you? Um, I could see her having tried to help Scott in the past and him always being like, no, no, stop. This is just me. Gotcha. Okay, so that's definitely a panel. From there, we have, you know, them leaving the warehouse and yeah from there there's just walking talking probably about a movie of some sort you know the kind of speech bubbles that start with a hey yeah you see uh blood sports 27 that was uh God, that was really gory i'm surprised that got pg-13 and then you know that's just the start of the speech bubble that fades away to them you know after that no more words no more speech bubbles just uh a playful shove here walking into a pizza parlor there someone dropping a pizza slice and having to go buy another until they're once more standing awkwardly outside of Natalie's house, which is always the worst part. Like the, hey, that was fun. I'll see you tomorrow, friend I've had for many years. Do that awkward, like, kind of like clapping thing with your hand because you don't really know if to go in for a hug or like a a fist pound, fist bump or... (laughs) handshake (laughs) where you settle for the awkward high five yeah right yeah and and she's really enthusiastic about the high five which makes you wonder if like that's all she really wanted or (laughs) yeah it's cool you know you didn't just grow boobs or anything this is normal everything's fine totally fine (laughs) she it gives you uh so as you say goodbye and you guys share a very friendly high five uh you begin walking away and then you hear from behind you hey scott and turning around, you'll see her walking backwards, and she gives you a couple of finger guns and says, thanks for the pizza. I will finger gun one-handed right back at her, too excessive, and say, next time you're buying. She says, you're on, but you better fly that time. Ugh, not in public. God. Shh. <laughs> she laughs and uh, heads inside. Yep. And uh, though a walk away may start with a, you know, head held high, strutting down the street kind of a thing, with no one around him, there's almost certainly a panel of him just sort of slumping over and shuffling back home. 
when you get home, walking inside, you immediately hear from, I guess, the living room, which is right next to the front door, the familiar voice of your grandfather, who you weren't expecting to be here this afternoon. Scott! Scott, is that you? Scotty, come in here. Grandpa, you sound so old. I'm very old. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I am very old. I am a grandfather, after all. Wow, all right. Um, hi, Grandpa. Was not expecting you here. I figured I would just stop by and see how the family's doing, see how you're doing, kiddo. And he gives you a feeble old man punch to the arm. Oh, right in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll say, uh, doing fine, still can't fly, been trying. Uh, you'll, you'll get the hang of it someday. Here, take a seat, ha have so share some whiskey with your grandfather. And you hear from the kitchen, your, your mom say, no, he's not having any whiskey. But mom. Your grandfather holds up like one finger and he gives you a very obvious wink wonk and says, of course he's not. All the whiskey's for me. Here, have a sip. Go ahead. It's okay. And he holds out his glass. Thanks, grandpa. That's, oh God. <laughs> It tastes like burning wood. <laughs> and hearing you start coughing from the kitchen, your mom says, William, come on. You can't be giving my son whiskey. And he says, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm talking to my grandson. I'm sorry. I can't hear you. Old age. And he just like gestures for you to take a seat. And he, he laughs as you're like coughing because of the whiskey. Yeah. Oh, Papa Squat. So, Scotty, how's uh, how's school going these days? Eh, you know, it's school. I mean, you show up, you sit down, you learn a few things, you leave. Uh, so not much has changed since I've been, then, it would seem. I mean, there's the direct data download of, you know, pertinent information for the tests. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Oh, how about, uh, meet any interesting women, Scotty? Grandpa, don't be weird. I'm just just having a casual conversation with my grandson. These are important things. Anyone you have your eye on? No, no. I mean, no, no, there's no one. And he gives you that look like, are you sure? Grandpa, mom's in the other room. Oh, she's she's not listening. I'm totally listening, you guys. I'll just gesticulate. Yeah, he huffs a little bit and I guess reclines and... What is the comfiest chair you guys have in the house? It's usually your dad's chair, but when your grandfather comes over, he claims it. What's the small talk between Scott and his grandfather in the long run? Like, is he an active participant in this conversation, or is it more of your grandfather asking you weird grandpa questions, like the ones I've already asked? I imagine it's a lot of just Scott waiting for his grandpa to say something that actually hooks his interest. It's like, okay, he's talking, he's asking me about school, blah, blah, blah. He's asking me about friends, blah, blah, blah. Have I seen any good movies lately? Whatever. Actually, wait, I did see a new movie lately. I saw Bloodsport 27, and then that gets him talking. Uh, after a little bit of a back and forth, we will uh, jump over to you, your grandfather, and your parents sitting down for dinner. Like, uh, maybe your father comes home in the middle of you talking to your grandfather. Maybe he was working late today. And he comes home just around the time dinner is actually ready. And regardless of whether or not Scott actually had plans of things he wanted to do right when he got home, he kind of gets suckered into a family dinner. And next thing we know, we see, you know, I, I, I picture Scott's family dinner being one of those longer tables that can definitely seat more than four people. And it looks a little spacious with just like three or four people sitting at it. But it's not super long, if that makes sense. Yeah, the kind of things where they put the uh, the table leafs in for a party like a year ago and just never bothered taking them out. Yep, pretty much. And uh, I think your dad asked you how school was. And from the sounds of it, you probably give him a similar answer that you gave to your grandfather. Yeah, the generic, you know, it was fine. Learned some things. Went home. Yeah, and neither he nor your mother press you about that. That I don't think they really ever do these days. At some point during the dinner... Your grandfather will say, So, uh, William, addressing your father, uh, I was thinking that maybe I could take Scotty over here to, uh, downtown for Remembrance Day on Friday to see the, the, uh, the ceremony by Mayor Carmichael. And, uh, well, you know how much I like that little change game where that the, the wall pushes change forward and you keep dropping coins in. Uh, I love that game. I could stand there for hours. And yeah, I think as your father takes a few bites, 
he says, I think that's a great idea. You two don't get to spend a lot of time together. So, Scott, are you okay for spending an afternoon with your grandfather? Uh, yeah, that's that's fine. Um, I was going to meet some friends there, uh, but I mean, I yeah, would but- love to meet your friends, Scott. I was just going to ask if you wanted to meet my friends. So great. I I think it's so great that you have friends. And he does this awkward grandpa smile. And you, your mom probably says, like, of course he has friends. He's a kid in high school. Kids in high school have friends. That's a thing they do. Yep. That's me. The super normal kid in high school. And your grandfather, like, looks at the both of them, then looks back at you and is, like, slowly nods and <laughs> starts taking uh, taking more out of his dinner. Eating more of his dinner is a better way to phrase that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how do you, how does the evening wrap up? Pretty much as usual. Yeah, and I imagine if there are any panels dedicated to it, it's going to be him going through that unbinding routine at the end of the day. I think it'd be neat if there was, like, another couple wings on his legs that he has not been using. Like, so the sort of thing you would not have seen in the attempting to fly scene. And these could be a little more densely feathered, a touch more radiant. Something that could hint that, hey, maybe if he was a little more comfortable with his body, a little more comfortable taking his pants off from one of his best friends, uh, who just happens to be an attractive young woman, um, maybe he could fly after all. (laughs) We'll have to find out. Okay, so yeah, we get a few, a uh, couple of panels that reveal a little bit more about the extent of his transformation. And I, I think maybe when he's in this process of like winding down and everything, there's a knock from his bedroom door. Yeah, he'll throw a sheet over himself in bed, grab a book, and say, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's your grandfather. Do you mind if I step in? I'm just about to head out. Yeah, sure. And he opens the door, walks in. Yeah, he he has his like overcoat on, and uh, your your grandfather he's definitely old. You know, he definitely he's hunched over a little bit, but he's wearing like a really nice jacket. He seems to have done pretty well for himself in his life, and is just kind of I guess riding it out at this point. <laughs> Scott, I just wanted to say goodbye, and then it was it was good to have dinner with you and William and Madison. Yeah, always good to see you, Grandpa. I'll uh, see you Friday. Definitely looking looking forward to it, Scott. Um, and that, do you, is dinner always like that? A little awkward. Uh, that seemed normal to me. I, was that awkward? Well, I, I just, you know, I know with, with everything that's going on, he just kind of very awkwardly gestures at you. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is people, you, you're treated okay at school and everything, right? Yeah, no, I got friends. Nobody gives me a hard time. It's, it's fine, grandpa. It's not like things were. He nods and he says, okay, okay, just, uh, just checking in then. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure you know this already, but, uh, the world's a crazy place and it's not really, doesn't matter, I guess, these days how, what you look like on the outside and the wings that you have or the powers you can use or anything like that. But it, it's what on in, what's on the inside that matters. And Scott, I, I know that you're a good person. <clears throat> yep, you're making it weird, Grandpa. I'm also a little drunk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> to be perfectly honest. But Scotty, seriously, he, he like, he hobbles over to you. <laughs> and he, like, puts a hand on your shoulder. And he, he says, you're, you're going to do great things. I know you are, Scott. I know you are. Yeah. You're I, a good kid. And he just, like, yeah. messes up your hair. Mm. I'd like, I, th- thank you, Grandpa. I'd, I'd like to do great things. Oh, thank you. I forgot to take the wig off. That, that's on me. Pop that off. And he kind of just holds you in his gaze for a little bit. It's uh, weird. <laughs> you know, he just doesn't say anything and looks down at you for a few moments before with a nod and a kind of a sway. He says, I, I should be going. Yep. I'll see you Friday. Looking forward to it, champ. And he walks out of the room. When he leaves... Some of his drunken words perhaps linger a little bit. I think that in a weird way, he was trying to shift your labels to at least every at least reaffirm something for one reason or another. And for the label shift, because I didn't do one for you and I did one for everyone else in their prelude. So I'm catching up (laughs) for your label shift. He's trying to shift your labels and you could either try to reject his influence 
you know, and try to inge- uh, reject the kind words and how important his words and thoughts are to you. Or you can just accept the influence and let what he said kind of weigh in and take root. Him saying that you're a good person and that it really doesn't matter how you look, you know, how different you are. It's who you try to be that matters. Is that a uh, freak down savior up? It's totally a freak down savior up. You know, I can accept that. I think it even kind of makes sense to lower the free your Scott's ridiculously high freak score at this point, considering how surprisingly mundane his life actually is at this point. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to kind of, there's a big idea that there's a lot of denial going on because despite how normal his life appears and seems to be, he has these twice daily rituals he has to go through just to try and keep his life that normal. Yeah. So there's no, there's, there's no escaping it. There's no real way to deny it because it's something he has to do every day. He has to acknowledge it. But at the same time, you know, he has a friend that seems to look completely over it, not look over it, but like accept it and treat you just as if you were who you used to be. And then your parents honestly just don't acknowledge it and treat you just like a regular kid. Right, right. And that alone is weird. Right. <laughs> your parents are very weird. <laughs> Um, so by my calculations, I think you are now at freak plus two, savior plus two. Correct. Yeah. And I think with that, we jump ahead to Friday for Remembrance Day. You don't actually have off of school. It's a huge downer and every student complains about it every year, but you have a shorter day. You get out like a couple hours early. And when we get to Remembrance Day, what what do you think Scott's plan is? Because I know you said you're going to meet up with your friends. You're also going with your grandfather. Your parents clearly don't care enough about you to spend this day with you, I guess. What what is the plan, do you think, for Scott? Probably walk home with William and Natalie. Get changed out of school clothes? I don't... Hmm. You know, I can't imagine that in the future that we have designated school clothes. No, there's no uniform at the school you guys are going to right there's no expectation to dress up nice so honestly i imagine the plan had been just go straight from school to downtown but if you have to meet up with this grandpa there's probably a uh a moment outside the school of uh god why don't they just cancel school i don't what (laughs) what good is four hours seriously yeah and uh, i imagine you're talking to natalie william hasn't quite shown up yet you guys are just standing out front of school and she throws her arms up towards the sky and says i know i say this every year why don't they just cancel school for remembrance day we could use one more holiday i think really how are we supposed to remember anything when we're stuck trying to remember things in class it's just it doesn't make sense it's bullshit and you know what i think you should run for class president because you could change it i think i should not do that i'd vote Um, for you i know you would that's william would vote for you of course william would he idolizes me it's kind of weird (laughs) she like leans in and says do you think he like tapes wings onto his back and cosplays at you when he's at home alone at night i just really hope he just has a crush on me or something that would be that would be fine (laughs) that'd be adorable (laughs) right yeah. And so you guys are having this little chit chat in front of school. So what's the plan for your grandfather to come by and pick you up? Um, I probably have to run home and meet him. So I'll have to meet these two down in city center. Uh, you live close to Natalie. So you guys are probably walking towards home together or heading home towards home together. And then the three of you will probably meet up downtown after you meet up with your grandfather. You, you again have this another nice back and forth with Natalie as you guys walk home. You share another brief and awkward parting (laughs) and you can get home and grab your stuff meet your grandfather who is uh he's actually waiting in his smart car in front of the house for you he's all he's dressed up really nice he has on a different really nice coat what's left of his hair is done up it's like slicked back and he 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 looks pretty suave for an old guy today uh going full grandpa joe yeah full grandpa joe a big bushy eyebrows (laughs) <laughs> they seem to be combed today. Yeah, I'll wave hay and just sort of jump right into his car, like sling my backpack into the back seat. Yeah, he uh, punches in the coordinates in the smart car and it starts driving off. And again, he asks you, you know, how school was. But I think the the most important question he asks is, um, so Scotty, uh, we're meeting a couple of your friends down there, huh? Yeah, just Will and Nat. Will and Nat's. But uh, tell me a little bit about Will and Nat, huh? Longtime friends? New friends? I mean, you're going to meet them for yourself. 
I guess Will's a new friend. I see. That's that's good. It's good to make new friends. And where, where'd you meet him? Uh, in the stairwell. He was getting bullied. Did you intervene? Yeah. Did you beat up the other kid? No, Grandpa. God. No. He looks a little disappointed. <laughs> that would just make me a bully. Uh, you're right. You're right. But, you know, sometimes, sometimes you have to get into a fight. And if you do, it's good to come out the victor. <laughs> come out winning. Well, Mom always said, never jump into a fight you can run away from. Did 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 William ever show you how to fight? Did he ever show you how to throw a punch? Can you throw a punch, Scotty? I, 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 it can't be that hard. You ball up your fist and swing, you know? It's... You know, when your father was younger, I taught him how to fight. And I think, I think one of these days I'll have to, you and I will have to square up. And I'll, I'll show you how to throw a punch or two. Okay, Grandpa. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes on to some, like semi-long-winded story about one of the fights he got into in high school when he was in high school how he uh totally absolutely crushed the other guy which is probably a complete lie but <laughs> you know it makes him feel good telling the story yeah there's a lot of uh-huh okay uh-huh yep yep mm -hmm. i i imagine that we get a few panels just like watching the car drive down the road and we get his speech bubbles telling this ridiculous story and then speech bubbles from you just going uh-huh yep okay gotcha so once you get towards downtown, there, there comes a point where you can't really drive into downtown anymore just because of how crowded this our streets are closed off. The, the two of you will find a parking spot and uh, begin the trek down. And Natalie's been like texting you, future texting you uh, pretty much the entire time. And you know she's already down there. Uh, she's actually waiting in the crowd of people who are waiting for Mayor Carmichael to begin the little ceremony downtown to kick things off. I, I think after you get out of the car and your grandfather is still kind of talking about another story from his youth that he's trying to relate to you with, it, it might dawn on you that you haven't heard from William like since this afternoon. Like you maybe you heard from him or saw him in the morning, but like towards the end of the school day to now, you haven't heard a peep from him at all. Then I think there should definitely be a panel uh, focused in on not a cell phone screen. I think we established my character likes the screen contacts, but definitely like his own point of view with like little chat messages in the in the like upper right hand corner. And like there'll be a no joke. My grandpa thinks I'm a huge freak. It's super weird. And then a little LOL from her. And then, hey, have you heard from William today? I haven't seen him since like 10. Yeah, she responds with an ellipsis followed by a no, come to think of it. I haven't heard from him. Weird that I didn't even think about that. I guess I just like the quiet. He's usually texting me quite often. Um, yeah, that is strange. LOL, maybe he has a crush on you. She says, don't be ridiculous. Right? No, clearly I'm his boyfriend. Uh, I'm going to try reaching out to him. Okay, let me know. I'm almost there. As you guys are walking, not a couple of minutes later, you receive a message from William that it, it just says, hey... There's something going on. I might be in over my head. That'll take me a moment. Um, definitely tuning out from my grandpa's storytelling at this point. Mm -hmm. It's all background noise. Yeah. Um, replying with a, uh, please tell me you're talking about a video game and you didn't try fighting crime or something. No, uh, I followed the manimals after school because I overheard that they were going to get up to something. And... I'm at City Hall, and so are they, and there's a lot of them. Another ellipses, followed by, I think this is a job for Seraph. You literally did try fighting crime. I just followed crime. We're going to talk about this later. I'm almost downtown. I'll have my grandpa swing by. We'll pick you up. <laughs> he says, I'm going to keep following them. No, William. <laughs> they could be up to something very suspicious william no you don't get a response will 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 you get you get a response from natalie that says he's not responding to me i'll scream cap and shoot it over the hurt response is that son of a bitch is he trying to fight crime that's what i said also yes you you don't get a response for a little bit and i i think when she does end up replying she says well, should we do something we should do something yeah one second and then i'll stop with the texting look to my grandpa and say 
Hey, Grandpa, um, think you can get us pretty close to City Hall? Uh, that's where my friends wanted to meet. Yeah, the, the, the ceremony for Mayor Carmichael, it's pretty much town center, right in front of City Hall, more or less. Right, right, just behind it, maybe. <clears throat> Might be something going on. He, he gives you a weird look. He says, w what kind of something? I don't really know. Look, you know my friend William I was telling you about? No, oh, yes, the new friend. Yeah, he really wants to be a superhero. Can he do anything? No. Oh, sounds like a poor choice then. Yeah. Does he know yeah. how to fight? I have no evidence that he does. Well, when I show you how to fight, Scotty, I'll show him too. You can invite him over. That'd be great. But for now, we just need to get behind the city hall place. <laughs> Your grandfather will uh, nod and I guess he'll like head off to uh, closer to that direction. Obviously, you can't close right in on it, but you can get to a better point that you guys could walk and swing behind City Hall. Cool. And when we're there, I'll text Will again. Just, hey, I'm here behind City Hall. Please don't be dead. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, don't get a response. And Natalie follows up by saying, are, are you at City Hall? I'm right across the street from it. Should I come over? Yeah, I'm right behind City Hall with my grandpa. Will's not responding. She responds by saying, I hope he's not dead. Right? That's what I said. She responds by saying, wow, we must hang out a lot. And that she'll beat you. Uh, she'll be right over. Cool. Yeah. Um, and meanwhile, I'll be climbing out from the back of my grandpa's car, just being like, Will. Will. <laughs> William. <laughs> William. Uh, a question uh, to follow up as you're like, as Scott's calling around behind City Hall, the, the street or two behind City Hall for his buddy, William, you have uh, contact lenses that you're viewing these conversations and smart lenses. How does the texting work? Is it just like thoughts? I'd like to think it's either a subvocal mic or the fingerless gloves I always wear just have sensors to detect the motion in my fingers. Oh, so you can kind of just like kind of just type it out in air. <laughs> Yeah. You don't catch William, and your, your grandfather can't steer his car too close behind City Hall, so you do have to go on foot at some point. Yes. Uh, if you want to actually close in, otherwise you're going to be blocks away, just for how streets are closed off and everything. Oh, totally closing in. I kind of assumed that we had gotten as close as we could, and we're already walking over. Okay. So you're, you're calling out to the streets for William. Your grandfather is also probably calling out to the streets for William. <laughs> just joining in and you'll eventually catch up with natalie who will see you guys and run over but you have not heard nor seen anything from william for a bit anyways i think the the, the panel we focus on at this point is like behind city hall a, a very tall broad building with uh <laughs> future lighting on it <laughs> i don't know a uh, very tall broad building and the three of you standing maybe across the street from behind it. And you get a, another notification from William. This time it's a picture. And it's a... So it's a selfie focused on William. But your good buddy Python is like right behind him with his chin rested on William's shoulder. And it seems like Python's the one taking a picture. But I guess William uses an actual phone. Fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> he did last time too. Yeah. So Python's holding William's phone. It clearly taking the picture and the the text underneath it just says uh, uh see you soon eyeballs but there's a lot of s's at the end of eyeballs of course there is because he's obnoxious yep <laughs> yep <laughs> talk about gimmick characters <laughs> uh i'll shoot him a response in text just saying hi seth where y'all at his response is another picture, this time of just his face, but he's sticking out his tongue and twirling it around because obviously it's a super long tongue. And the text underneath the picture says, upstairs near the mayor's office. Come find us. BRT. <laughs> <laughs> I love how nonchalant Scott is about this whole thing. <laughs> I think a lot of it is just he doesn't believe. That these random high school students are actually a threat in any way. <laughs> That's so incredibly legit. I love that. 
Natalie, as your grandfather's still just calling out William's name and looking around like your grandfather's actually going to do anything, Natalie will notice that you seem to be responding to someone and she'll say, is that William? Did you hear from him? Yeah, it's okay, guys. Um, I got to go get him out of a situation. I'll be back. Do, do you need help? It's it's fine. It's just Seth and his group. We'll We'll talk again. It'll be fine. And your grandfather strides over and says, What's that, Scotty? You, you have everything handled? Yes, Grandpa. Everything's handled. Everything's fine. Why don't you and Nat hang out? Go funnel cake? Nat, funnel cake? I do like funnel cake. Are you sure you have this? And your grandfather says, Yes, funnel cake. And Nat, you can tell me all about how you know my grandson, Scotty, and you know what you two do together and all those fun things. And she just gives you this look of like, Don't do this to me. Grandpa, don't be weird. I'll be back in like 10, maybe 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And I think, actually, no, I'm going to ask you if, uh, so he says, I'll be back in like 10 or 30 minutes. Obviously, he's going to go follow up on William. If we had to close out the comic at this point, what are the last panel or what is the last panel or what's the series of last panels? I want you to kind of set that up and see what you think. Probably... First one is him climbing through the, like, just an open window in this uh, city hall building, clambering through awkwardly. Next one is him walking through this hallway, slowly kind of straightening up in posture. And then the last one would be him uh, ascending the staircase, pulling back his hood and starting to take off the hoodie. Oh, that's that. That's the good. That's a money shot right there. <laughs> the the ascending the, the staircase and taking off the uh the hoodie that's good stuff i like it um, without a doubt all the eyes on him you can see wide open yeah is there any like light coming through that's glimmering off his body as it's being revealed i mean there has to be right of course <laughs> wonderful yeah that's the i think that's a great way to close out the this particular chapter of the comic as you are off to play hero once again uh, really, Williams, the big bad evil guy, he just constantly puts himself in positions that force you to be the hero that he wants you to be. <laughs> so William is really just Mr. Glass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is how it starts. But in like a few years, he's derailing trains just to make me go save people. Right, right. Oh, man, that's nuts. We'll see if that actually happens. <laughs> How old is my grandpa? Millions of years old. Uh, I don't know, dude. I just did an old man voice. I think I only have one or two of them. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Hello, Internet. It's me, Mr. Critically Accursed, popping in at the end to punch you in the face with a thank you for listening to our tabletop RPG podcast that's all the craze these days with young folk like me and you? <laughs> Big question mark? I don't know. Um, I know this was kind of a short episode. Seth and I managed to get right to the point and do all the things that we needed to do here. We got a nice look into Seraph's home life. His weird, weird home life. If you've enjoyed this issue... You will probably enjoy future issues, I hope. As should be custom by this point, in the description of this particular episode of our podcast, you should be able to find plenty of ways to contact the Critically Accursed podcast crew. Reach out to your favorite players, your favorite GM, who's probably me because I'm the only one running, so I win that by default and I'm pretty cool, I guess. But no, seriously, uh, reach out to us. Let us know what you think. Uh, let us know your favorite moments, your least favorite moments. Tell me how bad the audio is, because that's always fun to hear. <laughs> I try so hard. No, uh, <laughs> so yeah, cool. Thanks for sticking around, and we have plenty more where this came from. Our next issue will be issue number nine, Recharge. So I will uh, talk to you next time. Take care. You're a superhero.